Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us from right across the world for this important world first announcement on the partnership between the International Olympic Academy, the Hellenic Olympic Committee, and Costa Navarino for the new and very exciting golf development at Navarino Hills. Now, as many of you know, this golf development is the nearest one to ancient Olympia, the birthplace of the Olympic Games. And this announcement takes place on a very special day celebrated across the world, the International Olympic Day. I'm David Jones. I'll be hosting the press conference today, which we expect to take around about 40 minutes and we have a prestigious guest panel for you as well including representatives from the Hellenic Olympic Committee, the International Olympic Academy, the Hellenic Golf Federation and Costa Navarino as well as a question and answer with our honoured guests and golfing icons Zan Pedersen and Jose Maria Olazabal. We look forward to hearing from them very shortly. And one of you will also be winning a stay at Costa Navarino. So stay tuned to the end when the winner will be announced. Now, very sadly, as you can see, I am not hosting this live from Costa Navarino, although I do uh, have the pleasure of knowing exactly what it's like to stay there. I've been there the last couple of years, and it's the kind of place that once you've visited, it's never forgotten. Indeed, it's very hard then as a family to go anywhere else, as I and my family have found. It has that unique, alluring combination of the blue skies and sunshine of Greece, the wonderful, famous hospitality, and this incredible natural beauty as well, which, if I may say, is probably best experienced from the stunning golf courses which I've had the pleasure of playing. Two of them so far, and I'm looking forward to crossing another two off my list very shortly. But don't take my word for it. Here's a taste of what you can expect at the new Navarino Hills development, where we will shortly connect live with Nuno Sepulveda, the general manager of Costa Navarino Golf. Costa Navarino, we are very excited today about the two new golf courses that have been created by Jose Maria Lozabal. We expect both courses to be fully open for play spring 2022, and we look forward to welcome you all to experience Navarino Hills and Cost Navarino as a golf destination. Joining me today, I have today Natalie and Vasilis, members of our Junior Academy, which we run for talented kids from the region of Messina, investing in their future as the potential golfing stars of tomorrow. It is an honor also to officially announce to you together on the occasion of the International Olympic Day, a world golf course where Navarino Hills, in partnership with International Olympic Academy and the Hellenic Olympic Committee, this is the nearest golf development to ancient Olympia, birthplace of Olympic Games. We have come together and we are delighted to present the first International Olympic Academy golf course. We are very honored that the course will bear this name and will be associated with the Olympic values. This new course will also be focal point for activities organized by the International Olympic Academy and will further spread the Olympic message to new audi audiences. Thank you very much. See you very soon. See you later. What a wonderful and stunning initiative it clearly is. Can't wait to sample it myself, hopefully very soon. Um, as, as we know, Greece is a, a relative newcomer on the international golf stage. So, so Mr. Thomas Tokast, hope, uh, the president of the Hellenic Golf Federation, can hopefully talk to us about the positive impact 
this development is going to have. Mr. Tokas, you, you know all about, of course, Costa Navarino, and you've seen its developments over a period of, of years. What does this mean for the future of, of uh, golf in Greece? Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, distinguished guests, welcome. Carlos Ilzate. On behalf of the recently elected board of the Hellenic Golf Federation, I would like to present our aim to increase the awareness of golf in Greece and to strengthen our position in the European golf map. Amongst others, we are planning the following three actions. First, collaborate with the sports ministry and the Olympic Academy in order to set up a public golf facility for introduction of golf to the people in Athens. Second, introduce coaching schools that will form professional, which they continue to help the development of golf in Greece. And third, encourage developers, build new golf courses so that Greece may become a golf destination with multiple courses. As you know, golf is one of the top 10 games globally, both in terms of attracting athletes and generating economic activity. The reintroduction of golf at the Olympic Games was a very important milestone for the sport, which is played in 2007 countries around the world. The International Olympic Academy course will further boost the, first, the sports development and will attract youngsters' generation. And I would like to congratulate Mr. Kuvelos, President of the International Olympic Academy, Mr. Kostandakopoulos, Chairman of TEMES, Developers of Costa Navarino, for this innovative partnership. Last but not least, I would like to thank the President of the Hellenic Olympic Committee, Mr. Kapralos, for his support to the Federation. I will close with a wish in Greek by saying, Kalibria, Costa Navarino, Golf Hills. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Tokas, for that uh, wonderful speech. And uh, I think I've got some good news on our other guests on the call as well. Uh, Mr. Kapralos, I'm going to come to you first if you're able to unmute yourself. Um, you obviously were, were mentioned there by, by Mr. Tokas. Um, so, so Mr. Spiros Kaprolos, if you're just joining us, is, is of course an IOC member and he is the president of the Hellenic Olympic Committee. We were talking before we got rudely cut off, uh, Mr. Kaprolos, about the role of the HOC and what this partnership means for Greece and the Greek sports movement as well. Please give us a, a word on that. Thank you, David. Um, unfortunately, we had an electricity rupture and that's why we're disconnected and we created some issues there. But now we're back with you and it's uh, with great pleasure that I participate in the presentation of the first World International Olympic Academy golf course <clears throat> uh, together with the International Olympic Academy and Costa Navarino in a landmark day for sports and Olympism. International Olympic Day was first celebrated on June 23, 1948 to commemorate the founding anniversary of the International Olympic Committee, with Greece always being present at these important moments in time, continuing the great legacy of our ancestors who offered humanity the gift of the Olympic Games. On this day, we're given the opportunity more than ever to call on all citizens to participate in sports activities and to integrate exercise in their daily lives. And that is exactly what we're doing today with the presentation of our partnership and the promotion of golf, a sport including the program of the Tokyo Olympic Games, and uh, it's going now to happen for the second time after the Rio Games. A sport, golf, that has no age limits, thus sending a message that all of us, regardless of age, can put sport in our lives. We hope that this new International Olympic Academy golf course will give the opportunity to many people to play, and hopefully one day, maybe a Greek athlete, a Greek golfer will qualify for the Olympic Games. By uniting forces under the current agreement, we are provided with an additional platform through which we will be able to highlight and disseminate the values of Olympism as well as to promote Olympic education. And this through the actions that will take place in Costa Navarino 
but also in the renovated facilities in ancient Olympia managed by the International Olympic Academy. Through this collaboration, the sanctuary of ancient Olympia, where Olympus was born, will become even more prominent and will be an occasion for even more people to visit, to feel its energy, to view its beauty, and to endorse the Olympic ideals. I'm sure that the connection of these unique venues, the Costa Navarino and the International Olympic Academy, will produce synergies and will create multiple benefits, confirming in practice the ancient saying, power in union. Dear friend Achilleas, president of TEMES, my friend and colleague Isidoros, president of the International Olympic Academy, ladies and gentlemen, the Hellenic Olympic Committee and I will personally contribute in every possible way to the success of our new cooperation. I'm sure that in a few years, the result will justify our decisions and our efforts, and that we will remember with pride, with pride that we started this new course during the 2021 Olympic Day, just 30 days before the opening ceremony of the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. Thank you very much and good luck. Thank you so much, Mr. Kapralos, and thank you so much for that insight as well. Well, we will now hear from the International Olympic Academy and its president, Mr. Isidoros Kubelos. Uh, Mr. Kubelos, thank you so much for joining us today. Perhaps you could provide some further insight into the IOA and this partnership we have to look forward to. Thank you, David. Uh, yes, we all had the, this electricity cut down, but now we are back and we are happy. And uh, I, will I will start saying that today is a very important day. It's the Olympic Day. It's being celebrated all over the world. It is a day to remind to all those who form contemporary societies and mostly the youth with different political and religious beliefs or racial distinctive features that Olympic values are timeless and perpetual. The pursuit of excellence, fair play, friendship, respect to diversity, solidarity and peace are concepts and values which consists the way of life as the reviver of the Olympic Games and the modern Olympics Baron Pierre de Coubertin used state. This day has been chosen by the Hellenic Olympic Committee, the Temes Company, which represents Costa Navarino, and the International Olympic Academy, in order to celebrate it along with the announcement of the operation of the new International Olympic Academy golf course and the commencement of the cooperation between Costa Navarino, International Olympic Academy, and the Learning Olympic Committee, which aims of the wider dissemination of our mission for the future of the Olympic movement. Here, I would like to express uh, my thanks as president of the National Olympic Academy to our, my dear friend, Spiros Kapralos, for all his help and assistance with IOC in order to achieve this and reach this very, very important moment. Golf, which combines physical activity as well as mental capacity, is a highly competitive sport and has been finally reinstated to the Summer Olympics, initially for Rio de Janeiro in 2016 and Tokyo in 2020. In Greece, it has been constantly being evolving throughout the last years, gaining ground and becoming accessible due to the valuable contribution of the Hellenic Golf Federation. This promising collaboration consists of a series of activities that will take place at the Costa Navarino and the International Olympic Academy premises in ancient Olympia, which are now being renovated. It has already been agreed that Costa Navarino will host on an annual or biannual basis an Olympic medalist session, which will be organized by the International Olympic Academy in collaboration with the International Olympic Committee, an important event that will bring athletes with an Olympic distinction closer to the educational process required in the modern Olympic movement. At the same time, the visitors of the new Olympic Academy golf course will be offered the opportunity to visit the archaeological sites of Olympia and the premises of the Academy, where they will be provided with rich information 
on the history of the Olympic Games by specialized professors. The beginning of the cooperation between the International Olympic Academy and Costa Navarino also concerns the creation of an exclusive space inside the hotel with the installation of a special stand supplying useful information regarding the history and the principles of the Olympic movement with interactive and animated games, access to the libraries of the International Olympic Academy and the International Olympic Committee, as well as additional information on all Olympic issues. We are confident that the cooperation between the International Olympic Academy, Costa Navarino and Hellenic Olympic Committee opens a new form of approach to the Olympic phenomenon by stakeholders of all ages, with the aim to spread the principles of Olympics, which is the goal and mission of the International Olympic Academy. On this occasion of this event, I would like to express my warm thanks to Tebes Company, but mostly to the good friend and defender of this collaboration, Achilleas Kostantakopoulos, who so warmly supported this innovative idea from the very beginning. But also, I think it is appropriate, Achilleas, allow me to mention the late Theodor Vasilakis, who would be really proud of this collaboration as a great lover of golf and, of course, of the International Olympic Academy. I wish that the outcome of this cooperation will affirm the fact that Olympic education, through which the youth approaches Olympism, is not limited to traditional means, but also extends itself to new methods which lead to innovative paths for further development. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you to you, Mr. Kubelos, and we'll hear from uh, Achilles himself very shortly as well. But let's now hear more specifically on the Navarino Hills project itself from uh, Mr. Thomas Nemek, who's the chairman at uh, Concilium SA, the co-founders of Navarino Hells, uh, Hills. Welcome to you, Mr. Mr. Nemek. Over to you. Hello. It's a great pleasure to join you and share our vision for Navarino Hills. Our vision for this project was uh, to utilize an incredible location in the Messinian land, one with stunning sea and mountain views overlooking the historic Bay of Navarino to create the perfect environment for golf and introduce a unique development with two widely different world-class golf courses. In partnering with Jose Maria Olazabal, we felt his understanding of the natural environment and desire to retain its essence and sustainable attributes were key to the project's identity. Jose Maria's design also made full use of the site elevation, which rises to maximum 225 meters above uh, sea level. These golf facilities are bolstered by uh, 15,000 square meter of short game facility and 60 bay driving range plus a new sustainable clubhouse designed by our good friend and acclaimed architect, Lubomir Zeman, which aims to achieve class A plus in energy efficiency. Costa Navarino's commitment to sustainable development is of course applied at Navarino Hills as well. Indicatively, 52,000 endemic trees and shrubs were planted, while uh, the irrigation needs are covered by two water reservoirs with a total capacity nearly 500,000 cubic meters. Above all, all, our overarching aims is for Navarino Hills to be realized as a retreat with uh, is embedded in nature, with sport and wellness at its heart. Through the announcement of the first International Olympic Academy course at Navarino Hills, we are very happy to contribute to relying the essence of the Olympic spirit for all generations of golfers. I would like to thank the International Olympic Academy and the Hellenic Olympic Committee for giving us uh, this privilege. Hope to see you soon at Navarino Hills and the Olympic uh, Academy golf course. Many thanks to you, uh, Mr. Nemec. Great to hear from you on the vision and the new unique aspects of the Navarino Hills project as well. This new development with two 18-hole courses certainly enhances 
Costa Navarino's position as a golf and sports destination right across Europe and indeed the world. Now, to explain more about the vision for the Costa Navarino destination as a whole and the importance of the new partnership and the International Olympic Academy golf course, I'd now like to welcome Mr. Achilleas Konstantakopoulos, the chairman of Temes SA. Achilleas, what is the, the vision that you have uh, as a whole? You're going to have to unmute yourself and, and tell us all what we can uh, look forward to. Thank you very much, David, and uh, thank you all uh, to join us today. Good afternoon or good morning to some. Uh, it's an honor to join you uh, on this special day. Uh, before I, I read what I have prepared, I, I just want to say that I was touched by uh, the mention of my good friends uh, uh, Isidros Kuvelos and Spiros Kapralos about, you know, the late Theodor Vasilakis. And uh, I also wanted to say that, uh, you know, Costa Navarino started by two great men, by, my, by two great lovers of golf. My father, Captain Vasilis, who really loved the game. And then uh, Theodor Vasilakis was really... Uh, somebody who really tried to develop even more the game. And now I'm, I'm very proud to be partnered with a third great lover of golf, uh, Thomas Niemex, who without him also, this could not have happened. So I think that uh, the love of golf is, is uh, uh, spread around all over Costa Navarino and it's a place that, you know, the, the love of the game is really felt. So I became a golfer, not, not that early. Unfortunately, I'm not that good a golfer yet, but I hope that at some point, Jose Maria will give me some tips. So mm -hmm. I just want to say that uh, on behalf of Costa Navarino, you know, I would like to thank our partners in this unique operation for the world first international Olympic Academy golf course located at Navarino Hills. My personal thanks again go to the president of the Hellenic Olympic Committee, uh, and my good friend, Mrs. Pius Capralos, and to the president of the International Olympic Academy and good friend, Mr. Isidros Kouvelos, for their unwavering support. Also to the president of the LA Golf Federation, Mr. Thomas Tokas, for embracing this initiative and also to wish him uh, success in his, in his new uh, 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 duties as the new chairman of uh, our Golf Federation. I will also, of course, as I said before, like to thank once more our partner at Navarino Hills and uh, Costa Navarino Golf, Mr. Thomas Nemet, for his help and support in creating this amazing new golf destination in Messina. We are very honored and pleased that this new golf course will contribute to the Academy's mission in building a strong alliance between sport and education and in conveying the principles of the Olympic movement, ensuring that sport is practiced without any form of discrimination and embraces sustainability, humanism, universality, and solidarity. At Costa Navarino, we continue to grow in line with our philosophy to protect and preserve the natural beauty and heritage of the region of Messinia, and with a strong commitment to sustainable development and respect for local communities and traditions. Through our growth, we aim to continue having a positive if positive income, impact in the areas where we operate and to establish an upscale golf and sports destination that appeals to the global community. By 2022, Costa Navarino will be featuring four golf courses within a 13 kilometers area, each to a very high standard, as well as two new hotel properties, an earth shelter high-end resort and a vibrant lifestyle resort with the, front, with the waterfront Agora, thus expanding our offering. Last but not least, I would also like to thank uh, Mr. Jose Maria Olazabal for putting his heart in this design and thanking you all. And we look forward to welcoming you uh, at Costa Navarino. Thank you, David. Thank you so much, Mr. Konstantikopoulos. And uh, I think we've got something of a four ball there with Mr. Nemetz and, and uh, Mr. Lathabal himself. Let's see if we can organize that in the coming weeks, months and years. That'd be fantastic. Um, and now to our very special guests uh, who, who've not just been listening on today, but while everyone else has been bringing the insight on the, the aims of the first International Olympic Academy golf course, but have got something really important to add themselves on golf, the Olympic movement, sustainability, golf participation and, and the growth of the women's game as well. Firstly, the winner of two majors, 15 LPGA titles and someone who wrote herself into Solheim Cup folklore when holding the winning putt for Europe at the 2019 Solheim Cup. Suzanne Pettersen is about to join us 
and the legendary Ryder Cup star himself, two-time Masters champion, and as you've heard, designer of the new course, Jose Maria Olazabal himself. Suzanne, first to you. Thank you so much for being with us this afternoon. You played, of course, in the Olympics in 2016. Tell us about your experience in Brazil and how that actually differed from the professional tour. Well, first of all, thanks for having me and uh, congratulations to everyone for uh, a new uh, Olympic Academy course uh, resort. Uh, what a fantastic uh, place it looks like uh, and uh, it looks like a great golf course. But, uh, you know, Olympics was for me uh, a childhood dream uh, when uh, golf became part of the Olympic uh, program in uh, 2016, I was excited to be there. Uh, it was different. You're looked as uh, looked upon as an athlete uh, in combination with all other amazing athletes across different sports, and um, you realize kind of what the, the Olympic uh, rings all represent. Uh, and uh, for me, it was uh, it was a lifetime experience. I wish I could have brought back a medal. Uh, because obviously there's only three medals being handed out. And when you're somehow close, uh, it kind of just gives you an, some more fire to maybe um, uh, participate in another Olympics later on. But um, like I said, uh, for me, it was a childhood dream to become an Olympian um, and everything that the Olympics uh, represent. So um, uh, uh, very good experience. Maybe next time. There's always next time with the Olympics. That's the good thing, Suzanne. I want to bring in as well uh, the great Jose Maria Olazabal. Um, as we mentioned, Jose, it, it's wonderful to have you with us today. As a, a, a relative newcomer to the world stage in terms of golf, why did you throw your, your lot behind these new courses at Navarino Hills? And, and tell us what can visiting golfers really expect from their, their trips to to Navarino. Uh, well, maybe of how as you know, it's just uh, you know elevated about hundred and thirty fifty meters, uh, and you have uh, wonderful sceneries, and at the same time. Um, you know, uh, you have the mountains on the back, uh, you have the bay in front, and uh, I felt in love with, with the area straight away. I, I knew uh, uh, things could be uh, really special over there, and uh, right away with my team, we tried to make the best of it, and I think uh, the outcome is going to be pretty good. We, we do have 36 holes up in the hills, that are completely different in the sense that uh, one of them is facing more the, the mountains uh, uh, and the green area. And uh, with the other 18, uh, you see from uh, most of the holes, you see the Bay Area, which is uh, breathtaking. Uh, and uh, the idea and the philosophy behind the golf courses is, uh, you know, to be challenging uh, for uh, the high-level uh, player, but at the same time, uh, you know, I think about the amateurs that play, you know, maybe twice a week or, or maybe twice a month, uh, to have a lot of fun, to to enjoy the, the views, the, the golf course, uh, you know, the whole experience. And on top of that is, as Achilles has said, uh, it's not just the golf course. I mean, it's the facilities you're going to find over there, the food, uh, the, the great people, uh, you know, they're very friendly. They treat you really well. They make you feel special. So I think it's, it's a combination of, of a lot of things. And I think, uh, you know, when you, when you have the chance to go there and, and play the golf courses and experience the whole area uh, is, is something that is going to be really special. And how have you addressed the sustainability side? You've talked a little bit there about the different challenges, but what about the, the challenge of sustainability, Jose Maria? Well, now, nowadays that is very important. At the end of the day, you know, resources, uh, you know, are what they are and, and you have to be as efficient as possible, trying to reduce, <coughs> excuse me, trying to reduce, reduce the, the amount of water you, you're going to have to use on the golf course, trying to use certain... Um, 
grasses that will cope uh, with with the with the weather over there. Uh, you know, drainage areas, things like that, materials that you use. Uh, you know, trying to save uh, lo local vegetation as much as possible. As it's been said before, we've planted a lot of local plants, uh, trying to uh, enforce. Uh, you know the the, the natural uh, plants uh, in the area, so you have to think about all those elements uh, when building golf courses nowadays. You have to be uh, as green as possible and as sustainable as possible. So we, you know there is a lot of things that uh, have to go, uh, you know, with the design. That's why our team worked really hard in, in that area, uh, trying to fulfill. Uh, all the requirements that uh, you know uh, Costa Navarino demands uh, as as top uh, golfing destination. I, I want to come back to to Suzanne on this because I know Suzanne that that sustainability is very close to your heart in your role as uh, a geo sustainable golf champion. How do you then see a sustainable future for golf? Just have to unmute yourself, Suzanne, again. Uh, you know, I see as uh, golf uh, slash sport in a general as a fantastic platform to kind of communicate the right mes messages across the world. And uh, for me uh, to use kind of my um, name and likeness to kind of help raise awareness um, and drive action in a more credible and positive way around this topic is kind of, it feels like it's my role um, and I really care about it. Uh, and it's, uh, it's fantastic to see Costa Navarino, how they've uh, kind of managed to try and run this golf course in a more environmentally conscious and communi uh, community oriented way. Um, it all starts with uh, each and every one of us kind of uh, making a small little difference. And, um, for someone to kind of uh, for uh, running this uh, um, these important uh, issues um, and bring them to life uh, is very important. Um, uh, I see golf as a very positive and uh, uh, good kind of platform. Uh, we all are role models, and uh, if we can kind of help. Uh, bring action to life. Uh, I think that's kind of uh, a good way of uh, looking at it. I have also some, some questions on, on participation for both of you. We had the, the recent Women's Golf Day celebrating record numbers. Suzanne, how do you see the development of women's golf globally and what more can be done specifically to enhance it further, would you say? <laughs> That's a million dollar question. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's been fantastic. Even though we've all been through a rough uh, year and a half with the with the COVID and everything, I think golf in general has grown in uh, uh, population uh, popularity, especially here in Norway. You saw the memberships uh, go uh, straight through the roof. Uh, I think golf. Uh, People start looking at golf again as kind of the uh, fun sport to do, uh, to do together, especially in a time when people haven't seen each other. Uh, golf kind of uh, uh, mapped that as pretty much the only activity you could do um, that was safe. And uh, But how to get more girls uh, into golf? Uh, you know what? It takes uh, good uh, role models. Uh, bring the fun and uh, creative part into golf and um, make it uh, make it friendly. You know, you want to invite and you want to introduce the game of golf to as many people, kids, uh, as you possibly can. And hopefully uh, they'll fall in love with it the way I did, the way Jose Maria did. And uh, uh, we all know kind of uh, how much uh, fun and uh, how many memories we've had uh, through the game of golf. And um, if we can kind of help communicate just half of those experiences, maybe that's enough to kind of uh, inspire uh, a new generation to start uh, this great game. 
I think that's exactly what it needs, Suzanne. And, and great champions like yourself who speak so well and communicate so well about your love of the sport is surely going to have a huge impact to next generations. Jose Maria, uh, Suzanne reflected on it there. There's been a, a real growth globally, I think, through the pandemic yeah. of people who've been desperate to get out on golf courses. But what mm. impact do you think that the inclusion around the Olympic Games has had on golf as well? I think whenever you're part of, of a movement like the Olympics, I mean, it, it has to be always a positive thing. Um, it puts you, uh, as Susan said, the interest of the game puts is at the same level as other sports uh, at the Olympics, which is fantastic. Uh, you sit on TV. I mean, you, you s- it's seen all around the world. Uh, people that young kids, young girls, you know, that uh, uh, watch it on TV might be interested in, well, why don't we try golf? I mean, you know, it looks uh, uh, cool. Uh, that's, uh, I think, it's very important. And, uh, you know, Olympics, you know, is played every four years. I mean, it's, it's the ultimate um, goal, you know, to 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 be able to be part of it. Uh, a lot of sport people prepare themselves for four years just to be part of it and try to win a medal. I mean, that's how tough and how difficult it is. So to be part of that, uh, to be part of the spirit also of the of the Olympic movement, I think is huge. All the values uh, that we've, be, we've mentioned before uh, are huge. And if we can bring all that together, uh, for the game of golf, I think it's going to be fantastic to be part of uh, of the Olympic, uh, and I think it's going to be uh, great for the game of golf, great, great for for the future of the game of golf. And as I said, it's always a win-win situation. Uh, another great answer. Uh, Jose Maria, and thank you so much for being with us this afternoon. If you could just both stay around for a few moments because we are uh, receiving lots of questions from our audience as well. We'll try and get through as many of those as we have time for in the remaining minutes here. Uh, Questions as well from one or two of our contributors today. This comes from uh, uh, two, uh, Mr. Isidoros Cuvelos. Uh, Mr. Cuvelos, a question for you that's coming in here. Could you tell us more, please, about the continued development of your base at Ancient Olympia? as a hub for education. The National Olympic Academy is the, many people don't know, but uh, it's, uh, it's the world center of Olympism for culture and education. Because as we all know, uh, Olympism is not only sport. Olympism is two equal pillars. The one pillar is the sport, and the other equal pillar is culture and education. Uh, in the old days in ancient Greece, it was used to called gymnasium, ancient gymnasium, where all, all the young kids were educated, not only in sports, but also on poetry, on, uh, on various other things, uh, because education was very, very important. And uh, actually, Pierre de Coubertin, who was the reviver, he was, that was his dream, to, to, to develop this center, develop this institution, because he always said Olympics and Olympic Games without education are going to face a lot of troubles in the future. So through the education and through the culture, the image of Olympic Games and the Olympic uh, values are going to be saved and uh, look forward to the future. So what we do is we educate every year young people from all over the world. We also managed to have a few years ago and start a master degree program uh, for, uh, for, for, for young students who have the best master program degree on the world uh, with Olympic studies and sport management. Many, many students from International Olympic Academy are now taking places, important places in all Olympic institutions. I would also like to mention for our friends and uh, for all the audience just to know that the last wish of Baron Pierre de Coubertin was when the International Olympic Academy will initiate, uh, then his heart has to be taken by Lausanne and brought over to Olympia, to the International Olympic Academy. So uh, the heart of the founder of Olympic Games, of the reviver of the Olympic Games, Baron Pierre de Coubertin, is lying inside the International Olympic Academy, continues to beat 
and continues to remind the world and to the youth especially that most of all the Olympic values are the most important thing to remember and most important thing to be educated. So we all look forward with this cooperation to have, of course, new friends, new acquaintances from Olympic family, also from especially from the Gold family, which is a newcomer in the Olympic Games, is a new sport to join us and join forces for the future, for a better, for a better future of the youth generations. This is what we are all looking forward to. I don't know if I Thank covered you very, the question, but I, uh, well, I think you did. I think you did, Mr. Kubalas. Thank you so much uh, for your for your time this afternoon. A question as well for uh, Mr. Spiros Kapralos. So we're coming back to you, Mr. Kapralos. Here, um, the question comes: What does this partnership mean in terms of attracting future generations of children to golf in Greece? Could you, for example, see a time where golf enjoys the same kind of success as tennis has? In Greece, well, uh, tennis was also not that popular a few years ago, but uh, by having local stars, then uh, the the sport really grows and uh, and becomes uh, and, and becomes big. We we heard that uh, uh, earlier on, and uh, uh, and I think that uh, in golf. What we'll also need, of course, it's very difficult to have somebody who will get at the highest levels. But uh, what I asked Achilleas before is uh, uh, through this golf course, which is of uh, great quality and standards, if we can manage to, to bring some young Greek talented who will start playing golf, maybe one day perhaps, will have uh, some of the future stars uh, in golf as well. And of course, it's a lifetime decision for somebody, a talented person. He needs to work hard to, to become professional, to leave all the other things that uh, he could do in life and uh, dedicate himself or herself in golf. And work, work, work. That's the only way. And uh, we heard the great two athletes before uh, who have uh, were saying exactly the same thing. But... Hopefully, if uh, uh, Mr. Kostandakopoulos uh, uh, decides to help also the Greek Golf Federation by providing also the possibility for our national team to be, to be practicing there, perhaps uh, the athletes will develop further. Thank you. We will see, Mr. Kapralos. That sounded like a loaded question to Mr. Kostandakopoulos. <laughs> perhaps you'll have to address it privately. He's given me the thumbs up. Uh, off air, Mr. Kapralos. So that's good news. <laughs> we'll see. Let's go back to our two great athletes as well. Uh, let's go back first to Suzanne Pettersen. The question comes from, from Nick Bailey, editor of, of Golf News. Uh, Suzanne, it's something we've touched on already, but in your role as GEO Sustainable Golf Champion, are you seeing a shift change in golf course designers and developers' approach and the importance that is attached to environmental issues? Yes, I do indeed. Uh, and I think the most important thing, it's its now raised a lot more awareness. So uh, um, just here in Norway at my local club, uh, Oslo Golf Club, is GEO certified. It's, uh, um, and I also see now more tournaments uh, being GEO certified in the way they run their events in a more environmental friendly way. Um, and I think... Uh, these small, like if uh, golf courses around every country can kind of uh, bring the the topic uh, to to life, uh, I think that's the most important thing. And then maybe focus on a few things, uh, not to try to be overwhelmed and doing everything at once. But uh, I definitely see a shift, and that it makes me really happy to see new courses, new resorts uh, being built who definitely take sustainable action uh, in their planning and in their uh, kind of hard work of uh, becoming a, a great uh, uh, arena. Susan, thank you so much for that response and, and thank you so much for your time today. And a final question as well to, to Jose Maria uh, from Klaus Nadesar of Simply Golf. Uh, Jose Maria, the question is, how would you feel about participating at the Olympics yourself? And can you give us 
uh, some insights about the early discussions for golf's return at the Games. Well, obviously, first of all, I would be over the moon to be part of the Olympics. I've never been part uh, of, of the Olympics. Uh, you know, uh, Susan was a uh, uh, privilege uh, on that and uh, some other, uh, all the players that uh, participated in, in Brazil, uh, 16. So I think, you know, for me, I, I wouldn't hesitate. I would I would do whatever was, was needed to to be part of, of the Olympics and... Uh, you know, unfortunately, at my age, <laughs> it's going to be extremely difficult for that to happen. Um, and uh, uh, what was the second question? Uh, sorry, uh, David. Uh, about about uh, giving us some insights about the the return for golf at the games. Well, you know, I think when 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 I see. Um, players at the moment, you know, the schedule is, is so difficult. I would love to see, um, you know, the top, top players showing up there and uh, having the best possible field uh, at the Olympics. Uh, that, from my point of view, I think that would be huge for, for uh, the game of golf. Uh, I think that would be the first and the most important step uh, to really, first of all, show the world that we're really interested in, in being part of, of the Olympics. Uh, and I think that that would be huge, huge. Uh, but at the same time, I understand that the schedule is, is what it is. Uh, it's not just happening in golf. Uh, it's happening in other sports. Uh, by instance, you know, we... we we noticed uh, that uh, a few days ago, some tennis players like Rafa, you know, declined uh, to, to go to the Olympics. Um, we do have the Open Championship uh, uh, in middle of July. We do have a Ryder Cup uh, a year at the same time. And when I look at it, uh, it's sad from my point of, of view that uh, you see players maybe not showing up at the Olympics. Uh, but we will on the other half to and I and it's, it's an individual decision yeah it's yeah we will see what decision. happens and yeah yeah correct and we will we'll have to wait and see what happens but uh, you know uh, the, the best possible image for the game of golf would be to have everybody there you know all the top players showing up there putting a good show and saying hey listen Guys, we are we are for it. We we want to be part of this big time. Everybody turns up and yet again as a Spanish winner. Hey, Jose. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> just like I last we weekend. Have, I, think, I think we do have a good option over there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been an absolute honor to to speak to you and also to um, Suzanne as well. Just a wonderful honor to speak to to both of you on such an exciting day, and we have as well the opportunity for one of you to visit Costa Navarino in 2022 and to stay for four nights and play all four courses as well. What an incredible opportunity. This is what an amazing prize. The computer has randomly selected the winner. This is quite an extraordinary coincidence. The winner, slightly embarrassingly, is David Jones from Sky Sports. Uh, oh, no, sorry, that's wrong. Uh, I've got that wrong. <laughs> I'll be coming anyway. You try and stop me. The winner is Jan Paul Verstraten from Taylor May Golf. Congratulations to Jan Paul Verstraten. That is our randomly selected winner. Many congratulations. We will be in touch after the conference. So thank you so much for everyone who's joined us from across the globe for this world first news thank you to our brilliant panel as well and our esteemed special guests who've given up their time for us today joining us from all over the world to Suzanne Pedersen from Oslo to Jose Maria Olathabal over in the States as well great pleasure to speak to two sporting giants and finally we head back now to Navarino Hills for the inaugural tee shot on the International Olympic Academy golf course by children from Costa Navarino's Junior Golf Academy. It's over to you guys. <laughs> 